This dude's babysitter has a bit of a wild side, and not in the fun way. We start off meeting Cole Johnson, flexing his gains before getting close and personal with a needle. And just like me, he's terrified. Anyways, after his shot, he shoots his shot with some girl. Unfortunately, she's not his girlfriend, just a girl and a friend named Melanie. They chat before her dad picks her up. Nice ride, dad. What are you, 12? Anyways, as you can imagine, Cole is not really respected in the hood because of his nerdy looks. Relatable. His bullies brag about clapping. However, Cole is skeptical and immediately gets pushed. Things are about to get sussy when a chick named B suddenly enters the scene. She spoils the Better Call Saul ending for the bully, so he cries and retreats. Understandable. It was a great show. B teaches Cole how to get back on his bullies by prank calling their houses, and they go hanging out. Apparently, B is Cole's babysitter. Score. I dreamed about having such a babysitter when I was 12, 18, 35. Anyways, as any boy in the hood, Cole has a crush on B. She plays it cool like she hangs out with him not for the money. Yeah, destroys his mental health right in childhood. Cole comes home finding his mom in the basement covered in some white substance. Well, she's gotta earn a living. Oh, that's a web. Sorry. Cole asks if she considers him a baby. It's okay, son. You're just at that age where you hang out on Reddit too much. You'll get older and stronger. Just get rid of that jar under your bed until then, please. Later, Cole hangs out with his dad, who tries to teach him how to drive, but Cole is too scared, so they postpone it for the next week. It's okay, bud. I didn't get my driving license either. Pizza Hut is just around the corner, so there's no need. It seems like his parents are overprotective of Cole and treat him like a child. I mean, he's got a personal babysitter at 12. It's not something to be ashamed of if you ask me. It's like having an extra family member. You see, I grew up with a single mom and my dad was a spaceman landing on the moon. They even filmed the movie about him, The Martian, and that's why he never came back home. Meanwhile, on a school bus, Melanie trolls Cole because of B. Then Cole spots her with some nerdy boy and gets heartbroken. Later, the parents are planning a weekend without Cole. So they're driving far away in the land of cheap booze. This means Cole is left alone with B for the whole weekend. Score. The parents leave and the kids have a night party. Can you even call it a party without booze? I guess they're just dancing. Then they hang in the pool. Damn, this boy's having the time of his life. Envious? Of course I am. After some Netflix and chill, without the chill part, Cole asks B if she believes his parents will get a divorce. B immediately changes the subject to Melanie. You should consider her for girlfriend material. What can I say? If your crush is pushing you on another girl, it's a bad sign. And about the divorce? Don't worry. Dad won't be around too much, but you'll definitely get more presents when they try to win your loyalty. B reminds Cole it's sleepy time, but Cole wants to hang out more, so she gives him a bit of juice. Cole tries to act cool, but in reality, he has never drunk before, so he pours the shot into a plant. Weak. I began drinking while I was still in the womb. I, ha I, I have fetal alcohol syndrome. Anyway, B takes her portion of magic brew and sends Cole to bed. <laughs> There, he discusses with Melanie whether B is getting clapped tonight. Not with him, of course. B checks Cole before leaving. Cole thanks B for hanging out with him because he considers himself weird. Relatable. B says she likes weird. Said no girl ever. A couple of hours pass and Cole hears people coming into the house. He sneaks down to check it out. Now just who's down here clapping my crush? Whoa. Turns out it's a bunch of people. Max, Allison, John, Sonia, and Samuel. The nerdy dude who was hanging out with B. They play the bottle. No, not the game where you drink until the bottle's empty, but a truth or dare game. I don't get what the thrill is all about. I much prefer the first version of the game. After a couple tantalizing turns. It's Samuel's turn, but he's scared. Nerdy stuff. He loves it. Then, she penetrates him with two knives in the head. Whoa, I thought giving head was something different. They pour some spaghetti juice from Sam's head, filling up the jars. Apparently, Cole caught them in the middle of the devil's ritual. Yeah, I did the same deal with the devil myself, but he promised me 1 million subscribers and I'm short, so make sure to subscribe, guys, or I clap 13 people for nothing. Turns out, Samuel's blood was not enough. They need the blood of the innocent. Poor Cole. He runs into his bedroom, immediately calling the popo. The police suggest he hide, but Cole takes his situation to his own hands with a pocket knife. Bad idea, but you must learn from your mistakes or die. Cole hears steps approaching, so he gets in the bed, pretending he's asleep. The devil gang enters the room, ready to get some blood from Cole with a needle. B believes Cole is passed out because she poured some uh, melatonin in his drink, but we know something she doesn't. Oh no, not the needle again. B extracts Cole's premium fluid while the boy is too afraid to resist. Oh, I've been there. Oh well, that wasn't too bad. Not like the Sam thing. The gang leaves Cole alone, and the kid decides it's time to get out fast. Who knows? Maybe those lunatics will need a gallon more of the red stuff. Cole gets ready to jump out the window. Uh-oh, B is behind. But Cole passes out before noticing her. Cole wakes up tied to a chair and sees the whole blood gang staring at him. The cross-examination begins. Why didn't you drink the juice? Why is this guy flexing? Luckily, our boy Cole got a pocket knife. Well, it's better than nothing. He starts to cut the rope, but he has a mirror behind him and everyone sees it. Awkward. Cole makes the gang believe he didn't see Sam get clapped. So the gang eases up. B tells Cole the blood is for a science project. Sure, I'll believe that. Sonya's ready to untie him. But cops arrive. They always fail on timing. Things escalate 
escalate quickly. Giga Chad Max kicks Cole and he falls down. The cops kick in the door, pointing their guns at the gang. Max throws a metal stick and takes out one cop. The other cop is confused because shooting a black eye can end his career. The metalhead cop shoots Allison. B gets behind the confused cop and adjusts his throat. Everyone's screaming in agony. Adrenaline pumps in. I love it. The cop on the radio asks if everything's okay. B makes Cole give up the code for all clear and we're going to eat. And Max says it on the radio. Oh, so that's it? Is it really that easy to fool them? I gotta learn those codes. Allison screams about her peck getting shot. And Cole uses the moment to escape the cringe scene. Josh chases the boy, but Cole pushes Josh. So he steps on a toy and falls out from the second floor, landing his jugular right on sharp metal. What is this, rated R home alone? I have to admit, this house is pretty dangerous. Now Max chases our boy. So Cole barricades in his bedroom, trying to escape with a blanket rubbed through the window. Max catches him and tries to pull Cole back. Blanket rips and Cole lands his bones on solid earth. Well, it's a good thing he's young. He'll be good as new in no time. As for me, if I sleep wrong, I'm out of commission for a month. Anyway, Cole runs away and hides in a barn, where he finds sleeping Samuel. This is what happens if you never clap. You become a blood bag for a satanic ritual. At this moment, Cole could easily run away, call the coppers, and end the story. But he gets some tools from the barn, including a huge firework, and hides in the basement. Okay, seriously, this is home alone. Sonya finds the basement, joins the spider party, but somehow misses the boy under the blanket. A good old blanket saves us from all the monsters. Sonya almost leaves the basement, but Cole throws a tarantula from his blanket. The poor spider lands on a spider trap, and Sonya hears it. They found a snake. Better luck next time. Knives out, Sonya goes for the boy, but he's ready to fire the big dragon. Boom. Oh no. Missed. But Sonya gets her hands in the spider trap, so Cole wins some time to escape. Come on, boy. You should be miles away from your house by now. Nah, he decides to close Sonya in the basement. He sprays a bug killer in her face, and big dragon explodes. Whoa. So Americans want to ban guns, but this is okay? In the aftermath, Sonya is deadly dead of dying, but Max is here. He runs after Cole, so the boy starts to remember what B taught him. Drop like a bag of rock, and kick in the balls. Works like a charm, but only for a moment. This man is built different. Max starts choking Cole when we hear some strange sound. It's that bully guy Jeremy egging Cole's house. Whoa, perfect timing. When enemies turn into your saviors, Max is pissed that Cole lets some punk egg his property, so he throws Cole at Jeremy. Wait, weren't you trying to take him out a second ago? Well, who cares? Cole does some good talking, but a high kick he throws doesn't land well, while Jeremy lands his punch straight in the face. Ouch, that hurts. Cole decides that now it's the perfect time to tell him what just happened with him. You know, the whole ritual, the popo, the sleeping bodies. Jeremy seems to believe, just for a moment, then breaks an egg right on his head. Humiliating. Max returns to the scene, ready to finish the job. They play cat and mouse and Cole runs up to the tree. It doesn't help. Max can climb too. Gets the egg from Cole's face so he can die an honorable death. As far as the psychopath teens go, this guy's pretty dignified. Suddenly, the floor cracks. Max tries to grab a branch, but his hands are too slippery, so he falls. And the rope he used to climb magically ties up around his neck. No time to chill. There's B with a gun. The last one left. Cole runs to her friend Melanie, who heard the gunshot too. She lets him inside and he briefly explains the situation. Her dad is out, so it's just the two of them against a sick teen with a gun. What are their odds? The kids manage to hide when suddenly, B hears a phone call from upstairs. She goes up, then down again. The pair run into the bathroom, where Melanie decides it's the best time to make a move. Well, I'm pretty sure Cole lost his crush this night, so why not? Cole asks Melanie to hide and call for help, while he goes to end his simping. Well, you could just hide and, uh, play with Melanie until the cops arrive, but whatever. Cole runs back to his house, taunting B. Come and get me. I'm not a boy anymore. I just made out with a girl. Full-grown, 100% man material. He sees the house is empty, with all the evidence gone. Except for Allison. She's still chilling there. Cole finds a satanic book of spells and starts reading it when Allison attacks him from behind. Cole pushes her off and Allison accuses him of, uh, sussy harassment. This is America. Allison shares she did this whole ritual just to become a journalist. Cole suggests that they can just call the police and forget everything happened, but Allison doesn't fall for it. She grabs a knife and is ready to use it on Cole, when boom, headshot. It's B who just shotgunned Allison. B calms Cole down. Don't worry, my boy. I'm just gonna take that book and switch towns. But Cole has learned it the hard way not to trust women. Relatable. So he threatens to burn the book down if B doesn't tell him what the hell is going on here. Sacrifice to the devil, of course. What else would this be? Cole is heartbroken. He just learned that girls use boys. We've all been there, soldier. B tries to convince Cole that they could start it all over again. Just the two of them against the world. Those beautiful blue eyes are convincing, but Cole became Sigma male today. So he burns down the book and runs away. Then gets in Melanie's car, speeds up, and drives straight at B. What can I say? The boy's got balls. Cole gives B a cold Sigma goodbye and walks away. Cops arrive. Melanie gives Cole a kiss. Bullies betray Jeremy and support Cole. And parents arrive and smash Jeremy's bike. All that happy stuff ending. Moral of the story? Don't be a simp.